Good morning, everybody. We're here this morning just to um, say hello because you got to look right at that thing right there and then it looks like you're looking at the people. Look at that, the people. But anyway, um, because we've been kind of out of business for a few days because the computer was kind of messed wacky. up. Wacky. And, but her father got us back going again. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Also known as my child. Mm -hmm. And so, so we're back going again. So what, what I'm going to do today is just kind of update you on stuff we've been doing. Well, like, look at her. She's doing art on her face. See there? It, it's supposed to be a cloud with lightning coming out of it. And I did glitter for the rain. And glitter for the rain. So, you know, you can do art anywhere you want on your face or any place. But anyhow, so yeah, so I just want to kind of update you on things that's been going on around here. And today, well, I've got a herd of dogs underneath my desk because we have dog, we're dog sitting. Well, no, yeah. because dog there's sitting. a storm coming. Yeah, we're we, dog sitting. We're sort of dog sitting because there's a storm coming. And we live in a concrete buck house, but the dogs live over there in a camper. So... Yeah, we need to babysit. So we have to doggy babysit. Yes, we do. Because, you know, when these storms start coming around, and they say, uh, like, we should... Right now, the sun is shining, and... The, the wind's a little bit blowing. <clears throat> Just so a little bit. There's not much of anything yet for mm -hmm. storm. And, um... But we're, we're prepared in case, just in case. We got a lot of canned goods, got okay. a can opener. Yeah, there you go, can opener and canned goods. And um, we're, we're going to have a hurricane party. Hopefully our power doesn't go out and this one's going to bake some cookies. I already did. Oh, you already baked? I'm already baking them. Oh, you're baking, she's baking them already. Yeah. This one here is a... Baker. She is in the kitchen. And cook. She likes to cook. Uh, she cooks a lot for us. She mm -hmm. bakes. She is on a roll. I and do art. She does art. And she, and, um, and yeah, it's, it, she uh, is, yeah. she is, by the time, I mean, she's eight years old now. By the time she's 16, she'll be a professional. A professional. So anyway. Hey, do you want lasagna or uh, kaitondo? Yeah, kaitondo. Or duck and orange. <laughs> Something. Okay, so anyway, what's been going on with me? What, let me let me just show you a couple things. Maybe let me put my camera down here. One thing I just bought was this demon seam. I'm gonna play with this stuff. I'm not sure exactly. It's double stick light fusible web and double sided temporary stick bonds permanently when ironed. Ideal for sheer lightweight fabrics. Large appliques will not bubble. Create soft appliques for quilts and clothing. No sewing required. Machine wash and dry or dry clean. So anyway, that I bought that to play with. So I'm going to be playing with that. And then, um, okay. Well, I think most of you seen my finished slow stitch book. This one here, I call it finished, although you never know, I might add something to it. And But this one, I had a lot of fun doing this one. This was a lot of fun. And I'm surprised I actually finished something. Okay, and then I told some of you that I had, I had, um, in my book, wherever I put it, the book I have about defragmenting or fragmenting art um that's where i got this idea and my first idea was just to do them all in the blue tones but then as i got going i just wanted color because i am one for color i love color and so but what the idea was is you work in a series so my series was that i first I um, got four pieces of denim, eight, eight pieces of denim, about the same size. And then I got some scraps. Like in here, there's, you know, just a lot of these same, the white and the blues 
are the same in each one. And so what, I, what you do when you're doing working in a series, you don't finish one before going to the next. You're working in the whole series at the same time. So you might put a piece or two in the first one and then you might put a piece or two in, you know, and so you're working in all of them. And like when I was working on these ones, I had this one where there was a, I had a um, yo-yo laid on there but, and I was sewing on another one and I, that yo-yo caught my eye because I had sort of just dropped pieces of fabric on each one and I said, I want to work on that yo-yo. So I put this one down and I picked up this one and worked on putting that yo-yo down on this piece. And so then there was one of them, I don't know which one it was, that it seemed like there was a bare spot. Maybe it was this one. I don't know. Oh, yeah, it might have been that one. might have been my first one. I said, well, that seems like a bare spot. So I got a flower, and I put that flower, though, and the flower wasn't even the same color. It wasn't a blue. Then I really liked that flower in there. So then I put a flower on every one of them. And like I was first had was only going to put blue buttons, but then this red button just popped out at me and I said, oh, I want that red button. And so as it then turned out, they're not all blue. They've all got a blue, blue uh, denim background, blue denim, but then they've got a lot of blue in them, but then other colors too. I've got beads, like this one is the only one with a butterfly. And then I put beads down the middle which that's the only one with a butterfly. Then this one with a little flower and a button in the middle makes that one different. And I put beads, different color beads, all the way around the um, this little flower. A little piece of wool there. And, and so they're all kind of the same, but they're all different. And that's working in a series. So I had fun with this. I want to do this again. I mean, because I had, the whole time I was working on them, I had um, all eight of them laid out on my desk. And I just, you know, I just went from one to the other to the other, just back and forth until I feel like they might be finished. Not sure yet what I'm going to do with them, but I think, I mean, and when you're, you don't have to have a plan of action, what you're going to do with anything. But I've also was working on this here fabric textile journal, which um, I did this back, the covering, the cover, I did that um, on a video. And so then I made that one to be a cover where I put all the scrap pieces from a doll I was making, I put on on a piece. Yes, dear? I just put the toothpick into the cookie that I made. Yeah. Does that look cooked? Because that's what pulled out. Oh, no, you've got to let it cook just a little bit more. Okay. And so um, I made that for the cover of this journal, which is, this journal is most of the fragmented fragmented art pieces and so all of the all of the pieces in here on these pieces I um like I would take a piece of fabric and I would cut like put take threads out of the fabric take threads out or just make a hole in it a lot of these on here are wool. I have learned that I love playing with wool. And so on here, there's a lot of, I stitched the threads right into the, into the piece. I've got some buttons on there. And as you see where I stitched it to the, um, to the, to the, the, oh, the cover, because that's the inside of the cover, I, my stitches are all, none of them are equal or 
you know, they're all just jagged in there. And then I took these. These are the same thing. I had, there's some wool pieces in these. This one's, there's got some burlap in these. And they're all just fragments of fabric. And, and each one is topped with a button. And that's how each one is put together. And then I put them on that page. And then here's one. This one I did in mostly all blues, which um, all the denims. And I like this is like ticking for mattress ticking. That's a piece of wool here, and this is wool. And then I stuck with white threads and blue and white buttons. So this one did turn out to be all blue. I got a hole in here in this piece. There's a hole in there. This one here. I don't have this one stitched down yet. I'm going to stitch this down in a page. But this one here, I like how I did this one. This one here, again, there's a lot of wool pieces in here, burlap. And again, they are just fragments of, and I like to find old fabric that is worn. And I got one quilt that I've been cutting on that is just really, really worn. And I love that quilt so much. But then I went with my, you can see on the back, where I took here some black threads, and here I took white threads, and just put in some almost like hash marks. Here with the black and here with the white. This was all inspired from the same book that I, I'm working from. Now, and then here, I might take some of these to, um, and I might put these on this page, on the page like this. In fact, I think I will do that. And then on these other, pe you know, these, these bare spots then, then I might add just buttons or maybe a small piece of denim with a button something like that to finish that page and then I have these two pages this page so I got a lot of pages I can still work on so these may all go in this book because I can put like if I put I could put them there and here and that's where all eight of them would go in here and here and then I just have only one page left. And this one's going to live on the back. Here I did again. Oh, now this one here I did. Um, I put down a lot of scraps. But I stitched these ones on. I stitched these scraps on with the sewing machine. And then I, um, I think I showed you all this once already. But I repeat myself a lot. And, um... But then I took and put just little slash marks with, with um, thread. At, oh, I put the tool over the top and stitched the tool over the top. And then after I got all that done, then I put this black thread. And I think I like how that black thread with just the little slashing looks. You can see in the back where I put that. Oh, and then you can on the back you see where I stitch the buttons and I just put the buttons in an arc nothing matching and I like how that looks too that's going to go I'm gonna stitch that into the back page of this book and um, then I'll pretty much have this book well I'll have one page still to go here okay so that I've been working on while my computer was all broken and and then this here I have I have worked with chenille before but going through my stuff I found my chenille again and um, I thought I want to work with chenille so let me see first so the first one cover I did with the chenille was this one and I did a whole a whole bit of um, well, I took a, uh, 
I took a piece of felt. I like working with felt, the felt sheets too. And I covered the whole thing up with scraps of fabric. And then those were all stitched on with the sewing machine. And then I went with one layer of chenille. And the chenille, do I have that right here? Where did I put it? My chenille is, I, I buy it in a roll and, um, and, and then I lose it somewhere. And where did I put that chenille? Well, I'll find it. It's in a roll, and it's actually like unbiased tape that's not been folded. And so it's fabrics that's cut on the bias. And, and the best is, like, this is really good, the, what I have, because it's really a loose, a loose weave. So then when you get it all, all, um on there and I just took it and went around and around and around and around or a square, a square, a square, a rectangle away. And then I took my um it's kinda of, I first I had tried a little bit with a toothbrush, you know, to see how I could get it. Which you can do it with a toothbrush and just keep rubbing with a toothbrush and you can get it to bloom. That's what they call it, blooming. And then, but then I thought, oh no, I got this brush, which this is actually for um, needle felting. Well, then I took that brush and I used that. And I said, oh, that works good. But you can see how all of that blooms. So I did this one first. This is one layer. So this is also going to be a journal. This is one that I'm going to put inside because I'm, I kind of got lost doing my, um, my scrap bags and, um, my scrap, my scrapping kits, but one of these, this is going to go in one of the kits and then probably this one too. Now this one, I took a piece of felt. And then again, I just, oh, this one I used, oh, what did they call this other stuff? It's sort of like, oh, I don't have the label in here of this. This is a double-sided sticky something too. It's like sticky sheets. And I don't know what I did with the label to that one. And so... But it's sort of like the same, I think it's pretty much the same as this steam seam stuff. And I laid that across, and then I laid that across this piece of felt, and then I started taking pieces of fabric and just laying them across here. And then once I got that whole piece covered, then I armed it all on there. So then it stuck. But then I took and I used my sewing machine and I stitched along every, every um, edge, because those are raw edges. And I stitch across every edge. And so then that makes it look pretty. See, actually I could have went with, um, you know, hand stitching along each edge too but I that no I didn't want to do that and so and then I took my um, they call it chenille it chenille dash it if you look you can buy it on on um, you can buy it on Amazon and then there's some other places oh Etsy has it if you go on Etsy they have it but it's kind of expensive and and I would I've got like a part of a roll of this white left and I was looking and I want to get some more but it's kind of expensive because one roll of I think it's 40 yards is like $18 or something like that but they have different colors too now on here I put three layers so I got three layers on here so then 
when I brush this out then, it's a lot fluffier. See, I don't know if you can really tell. This is just one layer, and then this is three layers. So it's a lot more fluffy, more chenille-ish looking. So that's going to be another cover in one of my, my journals here. And then this one... Okay, this one here... Okay, th did I put the sticky on this one? I think I did. This is going to be another cover. And this one's got also three layers. I like that with my little kitties on the front. And um, so that's going to get pages put in it. But now this one here, I, I think I put the sticky stuff on this one too. And ironed it down. And then went on all of the seams. And this one... I used my Sashiko Colorful Thread and I um, stitched along, which then you can see inside here, where I stitched along each one of the seams. And that one I did slow stitching and um, just made the X, X's. All my X's live in Texas. Okay, and then here, what did I do on this? This here, this one I wanted to play. And so I took a piece again of felt and then I had a bunch of just strips of scraps and I took the strips and as I was going down the sewing machine I just kept shoving them I was using my letter opener here oops and I was just shoving the fabric up underneath I had the sewing machine going kind of slow and shoving the fabric up under the needle and um, and then I went this way, and then I went this way. Then then I just stitched. You can see the stitching on the back. I went both directions. And so I want to I want to um, I I just love it frayed. I just love to fray this stuff. So then I want I want to do more on this. So like I want to. I'm thinking like a flower here. Then I thought, I, then I took, um, then I took some strips of fabric again and made my rope. I made some green rope out of the strips of fabric. I think I've showed that before, but it's been a long time ago. But and where you just twist and twist and so I think I had like three different fabrics and but what I want to do with this then is I want to make like stems so I want to couch it on here and make stems and maybe put two or three flowers with the stems and then maybe I'll use some green yarn or something that'll make leaves and yeah it kind of really looks really like a lot but I like a lot I like I like a lot so that's what I plan to do with this another thing I've been doing while I've been away while, while I've been away is I've made I started um, fixing up my ribbon holders I'm using some of the clothespins that I bought and I'm just giving them a little a little face and a head just taking care of their little heads, just the tops, because then, is that the only two I did? I thought I had more. Okay, this one. But, and so then, they hold on to my ribbons for me, and like this here, now, like my rope, I can, um, I still have some straggly ends on my rope. What's nice about these pegs like this is you can put, like if you didn't have this, you, you can put the end of your, of your ribbon in to the slit in the clothespin and then just wrap because then it holds it. If you just had, if you didn't have that, that slit in there, then your, um, it would just keep spinning around. And so then 
you can take and store whatever your ribbons your pieces of you know your lengths of fabric and and um, any of those kind of things and see then look at there then that oh ouch pooch that's my foot and um, and and she will hold hang on to your um, hang on to your ribbon or your twine or whatever threads pieces of fabric she will store them for you and then I use these little tiny hair bands that you can get for little girls hair and then that holds holds things together on there see I first had them on with just a straight pin but then you poke yourself with it and so then she looks like she's all dressed up ready to go to the to the prom and so I've been kind of working on them and and I have a whole lot of them just painted I just painted the tops so they're ready to go when I get ready to do them so I got a bunch of them over there ready to go and I was thinking also about um, see this one here was one I did a, differently and she's got arms too and I she's all done differently and she's holding on a piece of um, she's hanging on to a snippet roll that I'm working on and and I also made her a complete dress to cover up so I'm kind of liking to do that I also worked on my cuff and I kind of like these things and this one I had a, a piece of a necklace here and I without taking it apart any further and I just couched it all on there and I got some buttons on there I don't have a lot on there I might add more or I might just start making another one I don't know but I like this one I think I like this one just as it is right here but that's a cuff I was working on that and um, okay seems like I did more stuff than that I'm not sure maybe that's all I've done but but yes I am working on my um this my oh scrap slow stitch supply kits I've been working on them and I've got a table set up back here that I've got all my kits on that I'm working on because I sent out some and then I just kind of it's what I do I just lost track and I um I um oh. yeah but now I got my table set up where I'm getting them to getting them together again and I'm um I've got the whole list of names of people who wanted them and I'm going to be contacting if you ha if I have your name that you wanted a slow stitch kit I'm going to be contacting you soon to find out if you still want one and um, I hope I hope so I I there you know they're thirty dollars but that includes the shipping and so which is sheep shipping is about 10 so the kids like about 20 and the shipping is about 10 and so I will be contacting those who I've got names for to see if you still want one because you'll get some kind of a slow stitch book in there and then things for slow stitching and a bag a tote bag a little um, oh that's what I started where did I put which I gotta take it apart. I started last night stitching on on one of my bags, but I gotta unstitch it. See, like this here bag, and um, this is the type of tote bag I still stuff everything in it. Well, see now here's one that I was working on, but I messed up here. I put I have the square pocket pinned on and then I started stitching it on and I'm stitching it on with beads on this one 
but then I got it all clumped right here somehow so I'm gonna take all that off and start over and so that I'm gonna work on that probably today and um, yeah I took my shower I wanted to get my shower done early because we don't know when this weather kicks in which I've got to check again on another on on the weather channel and see what it's doing out there because it's out in the Gulf and it's spinning around out there we are on the Gulf side of Florida and um, and we are as a crow flies we're about five miles as a crow flies from the Gulf to where we live thank goodness we're not in a flood zone most of the flood zone is closer to the Gulf and um, so but we're we we are not we're not that close well we're at least like five miles so we're out of the flood zone although we get a lot of water I mean, it, it we get yeah but we're not I'm not too concerned I the main concern is that you lose power and um, but we have a pretty good part power grid in our county it very rarely do we lose power but if we lose power then we also don't have water because we have our own pump and well and so but that's all right we've we we got a hurricane party planned yeah that's what you do you don't worry you just plan a party when when you have um the threat of a storm so that's that's what kind of what we're doing is we're kind of waiting we're gonna wait out the storm um they said here it's about 11 30 now they said maybe about noonish that we'd start really feeling the effects of the outer bands of the storm and so which the outer bands you get like gusts of wind and then you get a bit of rain and then some more wind then it might be real calm for a while and then all of a sudden more wind and some more rain and that's what the outer bands do the eye of the storm is is as far as i know i haven't checked the weather yet this morning but um they expect it to be what they call the big bend area which is where the um florida it bends into the panhandle there and so that's where they expect the eye of the storm to go through which that's where most actual eye of the storm is very calm but right around that eye that's where the worst highest winds are highest winds are it's almost like a humongous tornado you know and so that they expect is going to go into that big bend area which is north of us and um, which I don't want them to have the weather either but I don't want it either so it's got to go somewhere and it's just weather and so one thing about a hurricane is you have plenty of time to prepare and hunker down and get ready because there is so much like a tornado you do not get any warning it's just there and you don't get warning and um, but a hurricane you do get warning and so you can prepare so like right now if you go to the grocery store and try to um, like right now at the grocery store there's no water on the shelves there's no all of the because um, people really prepare ahead of time and they're buying their canned goods there's no bread there's no water all that kind of stuff is off the shelves i mean it is sold out because that's the way it goes in florida especially before a hurricane and um and so yeah i we're gonna be fine here we're not we you know it's just weather whether or not, I mean, there are some people, like it was, was it last year that that terrible Ian come through down around Fort Myers area, and there's a lot of people that are still, 
There's a lot of people that are homeless from that because there was the Sanibel Island, I think it's called, that they just about wiped that island out. And um, is it San? I might have the wrong name of that anim that island. And then there's another Pine Island south of that a little bit wiped out. It's just, it's just, and and there's a lot of people who are homeless. I mean, it's and are still cleaning up after that storm or trying to rebuild after that storm. I mean, so, you know, it's nothing to be taken lightly, but I've lived in Florida now since 1963. As a young child, I came, and so I've been through quite a few hurricanes, but I have not experienced I have experienced like days without power, but I've never experienced being in a house that was blown apart. And so, so that is good. I, you know, I, I feel like I've, I am very blessed. I feel, I feel like I'd rather it come to me than somebody else, but I, I'm blessed that I'm okay. And my whole family has never suffered any real bad events from the storms that come through and um, but then this storm after it goes through Florida then it's going to go up through they say Georgia and then South Carolina and as far as I know I have to go look some more to see what what what's what that storm is planned what it's got planned and so we just have to take it as what it is and so that's what our plan is for today is just to um, be safe through the storm and they there's no school today or tomorrow they close down the schools in celebration of the storm and so the kids are home from school today and um, that's why Ari is here baking cookies because she has no school today because they shut it down for the storms and mainly because they use the schools as shelters. And so the people that live right along the banks, that live right along the sea coast, the coast of the Gulf, those are mandatory evacuations. They have to leave. And they will not because they say, um, it's the newer houses along the, the shore are built up on stilts because you can't build a house on the ground over there anymore that's not legal you have to have them up on stilts and so there's a lot of stilt houses out that way but still the mandatory evacuation means you've got to leave and so then they set up the schoolhouses and the schoolhouses are set up for evacuation points so that's where these people that are mandatory evacuation they have a place to go and um, that is further inland and so that's why they close down the schools mainly so that they have these evacuation places and some of them are set up to take pets some of them um, don't take pets some of them are set up to take like whenever um, my late husband when he was very ill we were on a list that if we were if we had to evacuate then they would have picked us up via an ambulance or medical support whatever and bring us to a place that was set up for the medically needy if we had to evacuate and so, but we never had to, it never got that bad here, but we were on the list and everything was ready. So, and so our state really is good about taking care of, of people as much as possible before that, uh, you know, before that all happens. Now, like my daughters, my daughter and my daughter-in-law are both nurses and they, mandatory have to work so Jennifer is she's taken her so they sleep at the and you stay there for the duration 
you don't go home it's not you're here 12 hours and go home no you just go and you stay until everybody is taken care of so every all the nurses then they bring their bedding and overnight clothes whatever or over day whatever their pajamas and their bedding and their whatever they need toothbrush toothpaste hairbrush all that stuff they take and um, they stay at the hospital um, there was one time when when I was still working and we had I was working up from here at at a um, assisted living and um, we all of every employee there every employee had to come to work and had to bring your bedding or whatever and your family so my husband and I my husband yeah Papa came with me he stayed I think I had Billy there I don't remember now I think Billy no Billy I think it was in the army at that time but anyway and we stayed until the storm passed because you have to be there because if something happens and you have to evacuate the hospital or evacuate the nursing home or evacuate the assisted living facility wherever you're working at they needed all hands on deck to get um, these people transferred and so and that has happened oh my gosh so many times here in Florida that they've had to actually transfer a whole wing of patients to another hospital because one wing was blown down or something you know or maybe just the power I, I'm not sure what all but but our, our I have to say our state takes care of us pretty much here in Florida anyway so and here I am just a jabbering I guess I am a little bit tiny bit nervous but I don't let that get to me. <coughs> I try not to be nervous when the storms are coming because being nervous or worried really doesn't help anything. You be concerned, you just make sure things are, are ready. Just be ready. And so that's what we are. And so I'm gonna keep stitching because as long as I keep stitching, I'm good. Um, yeah. So that's about it. So let me see if I have something to read here. Of course I do. So I have my um, Helen Steiner Rice, a collection of blessings, which were always, we you, you just don't realize how many blessings you have in a day. If you start counting your blessings for a day, the first blessing you have is you woke up this morning. And so, and then the blessings just keep coming and then you woke up and then you get up and you can still walk there's blessing again and then you go to your kitchen and there's breakfast there's blessing again i mean blessing after blessing after blessing every day and so some people might say oh gosh i had such a horrible day because i had a flat tire did that flat tire make your whole day bad no just for that moment that you had the flat tire, you had to change the tire, whatever, whatever, then, and then everything got good again. So, no, don't, don't call it your whole day. Now, I'm going to see what, what kind of, um, for God so loved the world. Let's see what it says here. One moment, please. Uno momento. How to get the glasses. Ooh, that clears things right up. Okay. For God so loved the world, our Father up in heaven long, long years ago looked down in his great mercy upon the earth below and saw that folks were lonely and lost in deep despair. And he said, and so he said, I'll send my son to walk among them there so they can hear him speaking and feel his nearness too and see the many miracles that faith alone can do. For I know it will be easier to believe and understand if man can see and talk to him and touch his healing hand. So whenever we have troubles and we're overcome by cares, we can take it all to Jesus, for he understands our prayers. So we pray, we pray that this everyone makes it through this storm well and alive and healthy, and then we all can go on. 
I ask God to watch over you. Every step you take, every word you make, keep you safe and secure, keep you happy and humble and healthy. And above all, remember, if your day gets really bad today, just say one more day. God bless and keep you, and I'll see you on the next video. Thank you for loving me. I'm looking for my mouse. Oh, here it is. It always howls. I need to get like a mouse trap on this table. Okay, God bless.